Hello everyone. So today we will discuss occiput posterior position. Okay. In the last two three exam, both in NEET PG and FMG, uh, one question is coming on occiput posterior position. Okay. So high chances are there it will come in our upcoming exam also. So we all will focus here. It's a very easy topic. Okay. And uh, I, if you focus here for 15 20 minutes, you will be able to solve that question. Okay, so we start this topic here without a further ado. Uh, just I want to make a request to all of you, all the uh, guys who you are watching, please uh, like, share and subscribe my channel. Okay, it encourages me a lot and help me a lot in my teaching journey. So let's start it. First of all, uh, before uh, discussing occipito posterior, I would like to tell you that uh, some basics about the labor. Okay, so what is presentation? Presentation means the part of the fetus which is in the lower part of the uterus. Okay, usually the head is heavy, so head comes in the lower part of the uterus, as, and uh, that's why the most common presentation is the cephalic presentation. So when when head is in the lower part of the uh, uterus we say it uh, as a cephalic presentation okay what is uh, presenting part the part of the presentation here we will be discussing cephalic presentation so you can say the part of the head which is felt on pv that is the presenting part a head has three part the part which is between the posterior fontanelle you all will look in the camera the part which is between the posterior fontanelle and the interior fontanelle this part this part is known as the uh, vertex the part between the interior fontanelle and the supraorbital ridges this part is known as the brow or we can say forehead brow is nothing but forehead the part between the supraorbital ridges and the chin this part is known as the face presentation okay a face presenting part so head uh, head or cephalic presentation has three parts number one is the vertex between the interior fontanelle and the posterior fontanelle and uh, sorry between the posterior fontanelle and the interior fontanelle and the between the interior fontanelle and the supraorbital ridges is the brow and between the supraorbital ridges and the chin is the face presentation presenting part okay so most common is the vertex that is the vertex presentation the uh, between the posterior fontanelle and the interior fontanelle presentation okay now you uh, just imagine that uh, my head is a fetal head and it is inside the pelvis here it is a pubis and uh, behind is a sacrum okay so uh, you uh, now you can say that when it is Mm, uh, vertex presentation okay so you all know that head is attitude is flexed in the case of the vertex presentation so uh, in this condition the sacrum is in the interior and so you here the posterior fontanelle is close to the sacrum okay close to the sacrum and uh, for example if i turn my head like this then posterior fontanelle is in the trans is transverse direction uh, is in the uh, transfers uh, to the pelvis and if I totally turn myself 180 degree then the posterior fontanelle is close to the pubis okay so in a vertex uh, I want to say here that in the vertex presenting part there can be different different positions okay so uh, to describe that positions uniformly we have fixed a bony point on every presenting part so that everyone for example i was explaining them with the respect to posterior fontanelle how posterior fontanelle is in the maternal pelvis and if you choose to describe it as the interior fontanelle okay so uh, to uh, so that everyone who is examining the patient describes it uniformly a bony fixed point has been chosen on every presenting part in the key uh, and that is known as denominator in the case of vertex presentation that bony uh, fixed point in to explain the position of the fetal head in the maternal pelvis is the occiput so what is the denominator of the vertex presenting part it is the occiput 
okay so and what is position position is where the occiput or the denominator is in the maternal pelvis what is the relationship of the occiput in the maternal pelvis whether it is uh, in the right of the right part or interior part all these things okay so that is what we have to tell you where the denominator is in the uh, maternal pelvis that is the telling the position of the uh, position of the fetus okay okay the most common position is left occiput interior okay left occiput interior is that again imagine here there is a pelvis pubis is in the front and uh, sacrum is behind left occiput interior means sorry left occiput transverse means this this occiput is in the left direction and here okay like this so it is known as left occiput transverse this is the most common position and most common mal position is right occiput posterior right occiput posterior so it means that uh, this is uh, right ox this position is the most common mal position okay why right occiput posterior is more common than the left occiput posterior this was a question which was asked in the quiz okay because beta when occiput posterior is engaging itself in the uh, pelvis okay then on the left side there is sigmoid talon so uh, during engagement or during uh, the entry of the fetal head into the pelvis this uh, fetal head it it feels or it faces obstruction on the left side due to the presence of sigmoid sigmoid colon just adjacent to the just adjacent to the pelvis okay just adjacent to the pelvis there is uh, sigmoid colon in the left side so no one wants to face obstruction so the fetus turns itself and goes in the right side and then it engages so that is why right occipital posterior is more common than the left occipital posterior okay now let us see what is the cause of occipital posterior there are lot of causes of occipital posterior because usually most common causes asked to you so that is why we are discussing the most common causes android pelvis you all know uh, that the four pelvis or the front part of the android pelvis is very narrow remember android pelvis is heart shaped so the front part of the android pelvis is very narrow so the uh, the head broad part is occiput okay the front part is narrow of the fetal head the occiput is a broad part so the broad part goes into the broad portion of the pelvis that is the a uh, posterior part of the pelvis okay so occiput goes into the posterior part of the pelvis so occiput posterior is uh, most commonly uh, due to the android pelvis because in android pelvis the fourth pal pelvis is narrow so the occiput can't uh, uh, be fixed in the narrow part so the occiput itself uh, goes into the posterior part while engaging okay got it so now let us see what all are the findings in the case of the uh, when we will do the pa examination okay when we will do the pa examination so you see here here the occiput is uh, all of you will see in the uh, on the uh, on the uh, slide so here the occiput is interior and this is a normal uh it is not uh, uh it is not the mal position it is normal and uh, where there is occiput there is only the back so here there is a back so this occiput and the back it uh, you all know that back is a curved structure in the flexion attitude so it makes the skin of the uh skin uh, the shape of the abdomen also curved okay like this whereas in the case of the occiput posterior what is happening here in the, just below the uh, the uh, here in the front here is the sinciput which is a flat which is flat and here are the fetal limbs or and abdomen okay so the interior part of the uh, uh, abdomen so here uh, there is the uh, 
the curve is not such a sharp as in the case of occiput interior so here there is uh, infra umbilical this curve is specially uh, this there is loss of the curve especially below the umbilical so there is infra umbilical flattening and again i am sh will show you here here there was a curve in the infra umbilical area whereas here in the case of occiput posterior due to the presence of uh, face and due to the presence of limb anteriorly the, there is infra umbilical flattening so this is very important line question have come and chances are there you can come in your exam also so you have understood understood from these two position that in the case of occipital posterior due to the presence of face and the front abdomen and limbs there is uh, not a curved uh, not not a curve is absent and there is a flattening especially this flattening is in the infra umbilical portion okay now the second point finding which will get on the pa examination is that the fhs is heard in flanks so where is fhs heard here i would like to tell you that the basic point of the fetal heart rate is that uh, the back which is just posterior to the uh, heart so almost here is the heart in a fetus here in this fetus so the uh, the back which is just posterior to the heart so this uh, part here will be the fhs heard clearly okay whereas in this uh, occipital posterior the uh, fhs will heard clearly here okay because the back is here okay so uh, because you know that the back is uh, in the posterior in the case of occiput posterior so fetal heart rate uh, sound is heard posteriorly or we can say it laterally in the flanks much posteriorly okay because the most common position is right occipital posterior so it is uh, uh, heard in the right flank most commonly okay so it is heard in the right flank most commonly so these are the two important findings they have been asked in neat pg 2022 okay high chances are there please don't uh, ratta these things they are very easy to understand if you will understand it you will also apply clinically and you will not forget in your exam also okay so these are the two findings per abdominal that there is infra umbilical flattening and number two the fetal heart rate because it is heard on the back just behind posterior to the heart as the back is posterior and in the right side so uh, it is also heard in the right flank okay flank is the posterior part okay so uh, let's go to the next slide there are some more change in the findings in the uh, case of the occipital posterior when the occiput uh, posterior patient is in the labor okay here i would like or to also add here in the there is one important finding in the occipital posterior or uh, position mal position that uh, the head is not properly flexed head is deflexed okay normally the head is flexed like this okay see in the camera head is flexed like this but here the head is not flexed head is deflexed it is just like this okay it is not flexed okay it is deflex just like this normally i am keeping the head like this okay now due to this deflex fed head uh, we get some findings and uh, the first few findings are all the findings are due to the deflex head number one finding is frequent filling of the bladder okay so just imagine that my this hand you all know that bladder is interiorly to the uterus okay so just imagine that this my ha uh, hand is bladder okay first i will show you what happen when it is a posterior uh, sorry it is a flexed head so for example this is it when it is a flexed head okay you can see here there that only a point is touching the bladder okay and when it is a deflexed head see the sensiput the sensiput area the forehead area is flat so the whole bladder is being compressed by the 
by the uh, sinciput so there is frequent filling and frequent urge of micturition in the case of the occiput posterior because in the occiput posterior there is deflexed head and in the deflexed head the bladder is not compressed at a point rather it is compressed by this whole flat uh, sinciput and that is why it is uh, due to this frequent uh, due to the strong compression by this flax and siput there is frequent filling of the bladder there is delayed engagement again it is due to the deflexed head you all know in the deflexed heads the engaging diameter is large and the large diameters they engage late the another finding is loose hanging cervix okay this again you will see in the camera that for example my this fingers are cervix okay when it is a flexed head a whole circle is formed like this a whole circle is formed okay and when it is a deflexed head here the sinciput is flat it is not in a circular form so here uh, just in the front of the sinciput anteriorly the cervix is got loose there is a space because here it is not not curved this forehead is flat so this uh, is not curved so it is loose okay and same is condition with bag of membrane there is loose hanging cervix and bag of membrane because periphery is not circular in the case of the deflexed head so there is loose hanging of cervix and bag of membrane then there is premature bearing down why there is premature bearing down because the delivery will not happen if uh, the head does not get flexed so there is uh, forceful contraction given by the uterus so that the head get flexed so that forceful contractions is perceived by mother as a premature bearing down pains so you see all this about findings number 1 and number 2 all this findings were due to the deflexed head which is a common finding in the occiput posterior position okay uh, my uh, i have been i have undergone the normal vaginal delivery and my case was occiput posterior okay so i have faced all these things a lot okay uh, there was a delayed engagement i remember that uh, when my pv finding was uh, Uh, four centimeter. Still, uh, the uh, still my head was not engaged. Okay, and I have to uh, go to the loo every twenty uh, minutes or thirty minutes, and very small amount of urine I used to pass. Pass. Okay, and uh, I face lot of premature bearing down, strong contractions. Okay, so due to all this. Uh, uh, things there is prolongation in the first and second stage okay on the pv okay as you will uh, just see here if this is uh, the vagina and we are doing pv our hand usually goes anteriorly so whatever is in the interior that is felt uh, uh, easily okay when it is occiput posterior so anteriorly is the anterior fontanelle so it is felt very easily okay uh, in, uh, in uh, and when it is occiput anterior which is a common position in the posterior fontanelle is uh, felt but in the case of the occiput posterior the anterior fontanelle is easily felt okay so now we will be discussing about the mechanism of labor before mechanism of labor i would like to uh, tell you about this uh, diagram okay so here The, this is the triangular uh, fontanelle, and I already told you that triangular fontanelle is the posterior fontanelle, and the quadrangular fontanelle is the interior fontanelle. So this is uh, the right occipital posterior. This uh, outer one is the pelvis, and inner is the fetal head. Okay, so you can see here that occiput is in the right direction, as I already told you that when patient lies, uh, uh, when we check the patient, examine the patient, we are in face to face. Patient, patient is our in just opposite, standing opposite to us. So our right is the patient. Our right is the patient left. So our left is patient right. So this is a case of right occipital posterior. 
okay now what happens uh, during the labor pain so this was asked in neat pg 22 what happens in gynecoid pelvis so in your exam also you it can be asked what happens in android and what happens in anthropoid or itself they can repeat the question what happens in gynecoid okay so uh, the upper one is a diagram which i have tried to uh, make it just like the previous diagram okay so here i will explain you this outer one is the pelvis this is the pelvis ठीक है एंड दिस इज द इंटीरियर दिस इज द इंटीरियर साइड एंड दिस इज द पोस्टीरियर साइड ऑफ द पेलविस द लोअर साइड इज द पोस्टीरियर साइड एंड एज यू कैन सी दैट हेयर द क्वाड्रेंगुलर फ्रॉम फंटानले इज हेयर सो दिस इज द इंटीरियर फंटानले एंड दिस इज ट्राइंगुलर फंटानले सो दिस इज द पोस्टीरियर फंटानले सो इट इज अ केस ऑफ राइट ऑक्सीपुट पोस्टीरियर in the gynecoid pelvis we all have studied that it is a round pelvis and it has lot of shape uh, sorry it is a lot of space okay it is round pelvis and it has lot of space so this marking is the where originally okay, the where originally the uh, uh, right where originally the occiput was here okay the occiput was here originally because in gynecoid pelvis there is lot of space is and uh, when there are strong full contraction so uh, it flex the head and this contractions because there is lot of space this moves to the occiput moves to the anterior so it becomes occiput anterior in the case of the gynecoid pelvis the uh, the rotation is the Three eighth of the circle, and the occiput becomes occiput anterior. In the case of android pelvis, you all know that android pelvis is a heart shaped pelvis, and it is narrow in the front or in the interior. So uh, again, rotation do occur. Uh, rotation do occur, but now this time it occurs only one eighth of the circle. One eighth of the circle, and uh, the occiput becomes occiput transverse. ठीक है राइट ऑक्सीपुट ट्रांसफर्स राधर सो यू कैन सी हियर ऑक्सीपुट इज लाइंग हियर इन द राइट साइड हिट एंड दिस इज ऑक्सीपुट सो इट इज लाइंग इन द राइट साइड इट हैज बिकम राइट ऑक्सीपुट ट्रांसफर्स नाउ इट कैन नॉट गो फर्दर बिकॉज इन द एंड्रॉयड पेलविस द फ्रंट ऑफ द पेलविस द इंटीरियर पार्ट ऑफ द पेलविस इज नैरो नो स्पेस सो इट कैन एट कैन नॉट गो ओके वेयर इज इन द एंथ्रोपॉइड पेलविस देर इज लेटरली द लेटरल वॉल्स दीज आर द lateral walls they are narrow so uh, no ro rotation occurs as uh, interiorly in the front direction rather the uh, rotation occurs posteriorly because posteriorly there is more space so posteriorly the rotation occur and this is occiput this is occiput it becomes direct occiput posterior occiput just uh moves in the reverse direction uh, reverse one eighth direction and it becomes occiput posterior direct occiput posterior that occiput is now in close to the uh, sacrum or the posterior part of the pelvis okay so this is what happens in anthropoid and uh, pelvis okay in once again in and uh, in gynecoid pelvis the occiput comes into the anterior by rotating 1/8 because there is sorry by rotating 3/8 of the circle because in gynecoid pelvis there is lot of space it is round pelvis in the android pelvis there is less space anteriorly so rotation occurs in forward direction only 1/8 of the circle and it becomes right ox occiput becomes right occiput transverse and in the case of anthropoid pelvis there is no space uh, in the lateral actually so occiput goes into the re reverse direction one eighth of the circle reverse and it becomes direct occiput posterior okay so let us see what happens when after this rotation because in the gynecoid pelvis it has become occiput anterior so normal vaginal delivery happens and as you know that uh, gynecoid pelvis is a most common pelvis so 90% of the time this happens okay in the android pelvis it has become occiput transverse now no rotation can occur okay further because front pelvis is narrow so now what will happen how we will manage this case so uh, if the station is plus 2 you all know that if the station is plus 2 head is at the plus 2 or 2 cm below the ischial spine then we can apply the forceps or vacuum and we can extract the fetus 
okay uh, and uh, plus the fetal heart rate should be normal okay and if the station is less than plus 2 or it is uh, above the plus 2 station or if there is fetal heart rate distress then we have to do cesarean in the case of anthropoid pelvis because uh, direct occipital posterior position so now phase 2 pubis delivery will occur okay so yesterday i explained clearly what is phase 2 pubis delivery so that was all about the occipital posterior position i hope you like the video and you have no queries if you still you people have the queries then please uh, send it in the comment section i will solve your each and every uh, query thanks for joining me and please like share and subscribe my channel it helps me a lot in my teaching journey